All right, guys, it's your boy, Nick's Tape Banks. This week, I'm coming at you guys with a much awaited free agency guide. This is going to be a series, but um, today we're specifically doing the Shooters Edition. Bless up. All right, guys, right off the bat, I'm letting you guys know there are shooters, shooters to be had in this draft. We know shooters shoot. That's what the Knicks need because we have no goddamn shooters, okay? I have a whole list of guys that meet three qualifications. Now, not all of these guys are even going to land into free agency, but these guys are shooters nonetheless. So, the three qualifications. One, these guys had to be at least league average when it comes down to the three-point line. So that's 36% from three, 35, 36% from three this last season, okay? Second thing, these guys had to play at least 10 minutes a game, all right? No guys playing less than 10 minutes a game. Third of all, these guys had to have at least three three-point attempts per game, all right? We're trying to weed out all the flukes. I didn't care if these guys only played a couple games this season, at the end of the day, the Knicks need shooters, and we have tons of cap space, and uh, it never hurts to, to sign a shooter. And if they don't shoot, let them go. All right, I'm going to run through this list real quick. I'm not going to give you guys too much stats because in this series, we are going to have a final breakdown video. Uh, but to avoid from it being an hour-long video, I'm just going to give you guys names, and we're going to run through them. Okay, starting off with Davis Bertans. Everybody knows about Bertans. Bertans is a shooter, power forward. He's a beast. Knicks, please sign him. Isaiah Thomas, he was with the Washington Wizards as well, but he got traded to LA where he got waived. He has mentioned he wants to be on the Knicks. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't really want him. He is a scorer. Who knows, maybe he rejuvenates his career. Uh, but I don't know, not a guy that I'm necessarily jumping through leaps and bounds for, but he's a guy that I'm a fan of, um, and maybe the Knicks choose to sign him if he agrees to play that uh, veteran leadership role um, and that off-the-bench role. Okay, we have Jordan Clarkson. We have Fred Van Vliet, yet another guy, big name in this free agency. Um, he may not leave Toronto, but Toronto has a lot of guys that may be deserving of a paycheck. So somebody might have to go. Fred Van Vliet, Marcus O, Serge Ibaka. Those three deserve a major payday. Uh, Serge Ibaka and Marcus O, great vets, uh, big men, guys that are consummate pros would look good on the Knicks. Uh, but like I said, they can all shoot. A lot of you guys are down on Fred Van Vliet. Okay, Van Vliet is a shooter. He's a shooter and we need shooters. Guys, please stop hating on Fred Van Vliet. I know he shoots below average at the rim, but he makes plays for other guys. He shoots and he attacks. And that's what the Knicks need. Um, ultimately, I wouldn't cry if we don't get him, but he's a guy that I think fans should be more excited to see. We have Bogdan Bogdanovich. Bogdan Bogdanovich, great guy great shooter we saw him on the Pacers light up Cleveland when he was on the Pacers in the playoffs but um yeah we have Carmelo Anthony former New York Nick uh I would love to see Melo back and be a veteran for us we saw him with Porzingis uh gave Porzingis a couple moves um if you guys haven't noticed Porzingis uses that Melo jab step he, he's, he's learned a lot from from Melo if you watch his game actually um, and I think he was a lot of our guys can stand to learn a lot from Melo, uh, be it Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox needs some go to offense and he has a quick first step. So if he learns that jab step from Melo, Kevin Knox could be deadly. RJ has that that bully type physicality that Melo had in his prime. And uh, he could stand to learn that little post up spin move that made Melo pretty much unguardable in his prime. Um, and just overall, he's a pro's pro, and I would love to see him back in New York, but I think he deserves a chip, so um, I don't think the Knicks should go after him yet, but if he really chooses to, um, I would love to see him. Rodney Hood, 
Rodney Hood has been a bit of a disappointment throughout the last several seasons of his career, but he can shoot. Cameron Payne only played eight games this season, okay? But he shot 51% during those eight games. Please show love to Cameron Payne, even if it's only off the bench. I would still love to have him. Alec Burks from Philly. Glenn Robinson the third from Philly. Forkran Korkmaz from Philly. Those guys can shoot. Um, role players, they're all role players, but they can shoot. And that's what the Knicks need. Evan Fournier, okay? Evan Fournier, he is a shooter, scorer, and um, we all know about Evan Fournier. He may choose to stay uh, simply because with this whole COVID-19 thing, salary caps are lower, and teams are trying to cut expenditures due to their pockets hurting. But should he decide to leave, we all know Evan Fournier gives us a scorer. He gives us a shooter, something the Knicks lack. Danilo Gallinari, yet another shooter. Um, Mike Muscala, another underrated shooter. Now, on the Knicks, we have our shooter, Damian Dotson. Now, Dot, free Dot, first of all, he is a defender. He's a shooter. He's not afraid to put the ball on the floor. He's a guy that I think a lot of fans wish they would have saw more of this last season and someone that we wish we would have developed. I mean, still a young guy. Um, and we hope the Knicks re-sign him. Uh, but it looks like things are kind of over with him uh, as far as with New York. But should we re-sign him? He gives us everything we need. 3 and D. He's not afraid. Um, and although he had a down year this year, uh, I think if he's given consistent minutes and a team that really believes in him, he can really be an impact player in the NBA. Um, Brandon Ingram. I don't think that the Pelicans let him go. But if they do let him go like idiots, uh, he's a scorer. He can move the ball. He can rebound. Um, you know, he's a future superstar and he can shoot the ball. Etwan Moore, teammate to Brandon Ingram. He's a vet. He can shoot the ball. Great influence. I think he could possibly be a great influence on our young guys. He's had a long career. Can teach them how to have these long careers. Um, Malik Beasley. Uh, I don't think he's getting let go, but um, if Minnesota lets go of Malik Beasley, Malik Beasley is a shooter um, that can shoot at a high clip, at a high volume, and uh, those are the kind of guys that we need. Kyle Korver. Now, when you think of shooter, okay, I think about 99% of us think of OG Atlanta Hawks, Kyle Korver. And if you don't, you think of a guy that looks just like him, okay? Kyle Korver is a shooter shooter. I don't have to give you any stats. He's a vet. He's 39 years old. He can teach our guys how to have these long careers and how to have longevity. So from that aspect alone, he has such value to the team. But he's a shooter, and he would allow someone like RJ to open up his game. He would allow someone like Mitch to open up his game and any other young guys that we bring on, okay? Wesley Matthews, former Nick. He is another 3 and D guy. He was someone that I really liked back on his Portland days. Um, and I think he was a quality player on the Knicks. He would be a great role player, 3 and D, um, humble guy, okay? Goran Dragic. A lot of you guys were looking to Goran Dragic saying, Oh, he might be a vet that we could pick up. And he could shoot. He can play make. He can do. He can do it all. Um, but he might be on the cheap. Okay, he has played himself out of that on the cheap conversation. That man is a pro's pro. He is a baller for real. Okay, that man can shoot. He can score on all three levels. He can move the ball, so he can make players around him better and not only that but he also is a pros pro every stop that he's had in the nba i will tell you appreciated him and his demeanor i would love to see him on the knicks uh, but i doubt he comes to the knicks because i think miami resigns him um kelly olenic another heat player right now He's a he would be a great backup center. Maybe sometimes you slot him at the four next to Mitch. 
um, whenever you're going against uh, a team that doesn't really have a quick four. But uh, Kelly Olynyk, uh, he can shoot. He can play a bit of defense. He can rebound. He's the kind of guy that you want to see on the Knicks. Um, Avery Bradley. Avery Bradley. I think all of us can remember when he put LeBron on skates. He can shoot. He uh, hasn't been the same shooter that he once was. Um, but he can play defense and he can shoot. So always a spot for guys like that. Contavious Cowell Pope has laid an egg consistently. Um, not only in the playoffs, but in the regular season and before. But uh, he still shoots the ball at a decent clip. And, um, you know, the Knicks can't give up on that. Markeith Morris. Morris is another shooter on L.A. He is a... Uh, a great shooter and brother to former Nick Marcus Moore Sr., who uh, we're going to talk about now, who was on the L.A. Clippers. Marcus Morris Sr., great, great shooter, shooting 40% from the three-point line. He was a bit of a ball hog on the Knicks, but from what I understand, he's a coach's player. Uh, coaches love him, and uh, I think he'd listen if Tibbs told him, hey, relax on uh, all the crazy shots and all the all that uh that nut stuff you do on the court okay so jamichael green another vet can shoot the ball can't be mad at that reggie jackson now reggie jackson he's a guy that i don't know if he's gonna want to be on the knicks because he's not the point guard of the future um and honestly speaking i don't know if i really want him to take minutes away from uh young guys that might come in at that spot uh but he can shoot the ball, and um, if he chooses to be a vet and a role player, um, definitely, definitely uh, wouldn't be a bad addition. Um, Justin Holiday, former New York Knicks. He was a killer from the mid-range when he was with us. Great defender, 3 and D guy. He has improved his three-point shot greatly year over year. And, um, hey, we miss you back in New York, kid. Um, Langston Galloway. Now that's that's my guy, Langston Galloway, um, humble guy. When the Knicks first called him up from the G League, it was a great story, and uh, I was really rooting for him, as I'm sure a lot of New York Knicks fans were. And even now that he's gone, uh, we're still rooting for him. He can shoot, um, plays defense, hustles hard. He's not necessarily one of those guys that is, um, you know, a drop dead stud. Uh, on the court but he is someone that plays hard can shoot the ball plays defense and would, we would love to have him back on the Knicks Sviatoslav Mikhailuk okay that's my best attempt to pronounce his name another shooter okay I don't think he gets let go of he shoots a good clip at a high volume and um, he's at a really cheap contract uh, club option I believe so no way he gets let go of Tony Snell, former Tibbs player. We could use a couple former Tibbs players, uh, help kind of break down the game to the young guys, explain to them, hey, this is what Tibbs is telling you guys. This is what Tibbs means. Um, great 3 and D player throughout his career. A great vet for us, even though he's young. He's only 28 years old, but it feels like he's been in the league forever. And it feels like he's much older than that. So we're down to the last couple. Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant is much more than just a shooter. He's a great defender. He's young at 26 years old. And he's a freak athlete. So I think he has potential to be more should someone decide they want to really hone his skills. Uh, but he's someone I'd be looking forward to. Tim Hardaway Jr., former New York Knicks. A lot of you guys hate him. Some of you guys love him. Uh, I think that he is a three-level scorer. Um, he was inefficient on the Knicks, um, and he's always been better on other teams, and there's a reason for that. Other teams don't ask him to do what we ask him to do. We asked him to be a first option on the Knicks once Melo was injured and out, once Porzingis was injured and out, and a lot of you guys got upset because how inefficient he was. Yes, he is not built for that. Okay? He is not built for that. You can't get mad at someone for not being able to succeed in a circumstance they're not built for. I don't think he's not necessarily built for New York. He's not built to be a first option, period. Um, 
I wouldn't mind seeing him back on New York. Maybe he plays that three position next to RJ, gives RJ a shooter and a scorer to take some attention off of him. Um, I don't think he will leave his current situation because I don't think he'll get that same contract anywhere else. Um, and he has a player's option. I also, I also don't think he'll leave because he's in a great position with Luka and KP and all those guys down there um, in Dallas. But uh, if he decided he wanted to finish up business in New York, I wouldn't mind him. I wouldn't mind him. I know a lot of you guys definitely would uh, be upset with that um, with that pickup. Otto Porter Jr. There's almost no point in talking about him because he has a player's option for his ridiculous $26 million or $27 million contract, which he's nowhere near worth. Not to Chicago, not to New York, not to anywhere. Um, but he's a shooter, and um, if he decided for some reason to test the waters and leave Chicago in his ridiculous contract, and he came to the Knicks, he'd be a good shooter for us. Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward, he does it all. He plays a bit of defense. He moves the ball. He rebounds. He shoots. He scores. He is a consummate pro. We all saw him come back from his crazy injury. Um, I like the guy. I don't think he comes to New York, especially when he has um, another year at over $30 million on the table for him. That's something New York can't provide him. But, hey, you want to come to New York? Arms are open, okay? Joe Harris. Now, this is a shooter, okay? Joe Harris is a shooter. We need guys like him. Um, if he comes to New York, you already know we haven't won a chip in a long time, so we're gonna throw a Joe Harris parade. Uh, being on uh, the Nets doesn't count. That's not the New York team. So, thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, it's a bit long, but the alternative was for it to be an hour long and me breaking down each player, which I did record. Um, Make sure you guys like, make sure you guys comment, tell me what you guys think about any of these guys, if you've even heard of any uh, of all these guys, which one of these guys you weren't thinking about but stands out, if I changed your opinion on any of these guys, uh, make sure you guys subscribe, hit the notification bell so that way you guys get notified when I post. Um, and you know, shoot or shoot, we need that. And look forward to this series continuing as I break down the 2020 offseason targets. Bless up.